What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another Art of War strategy session. This one is actually super impromptu. I wasn't going to do one on this topic. I never even wasn't going to do a strategy session today. But one of our Warner members, Don, he just messaged me. And I wanted to do him the service uh, of really doing a proper answer to his question because I thought it was phenomenal. That's just one of the perks you get to be, uh, perks you get when you're a Warner member. You get literally first hand access to the world's greatest 40K minds. So Don's question, um, really awesome question. It was, with all these crazy changes happening to the game, right? We have Nephilim coming out, all these other rules, Chaos Space Marines are on the, on the horizon. Like The game is shifting. How do you even approach list building right now? And this is uh, part of a larger topic I want to cover for everybody, where we go through list building and, and conceptually, where do you even start with list building? Because I think so many people, they get it wrong or they, they don't know where to begin. It's overwhelming. There's so many rules to 40K. But you know what? We're here to unpack all that. So with the game changing in Flux right now, there's a few things to keep in mind. And I think that's really important through the entire process right now. One, um, it should be fun and exciting for you. If you're, not, if, you're, if you're dreading these new rules, oh no, my game is gonna suck, I hope they don't ruin the game. That's, a, that's like a very negative mentality. And I see it very commonly, I used to have the same kind of mentality. It's like, I like 40K, I don't want them to change it. Embrace the change. It's coming one way or the other and you know, in the, if we're, the, we're looking at the general direction of Games Workshop as a graph, like their engagement with the community, their uh, willingness to accept help with the rules or uh, play test rules even, but back in the day we didn't get that, the speed at which they adjust the rules now, you can clearly see that um, things are looking better than they were a year ago, two years ago, three years ago. That graph is going up. So have faith in the system, I guess, that you know, maybe you don't agree with all the changes, but just embrace them. They're coming one, one way or the other, and it's just another rule set uh, that you're going to have to learn to play with and adapt to. I've been playing 40K since 4th edition. You know how many times have the rules changed since I began? And you know what? It, there's always a way through, and the game is generally in a much better place than it was. So embrace it with an open mind, open heart, you know, that kind of thing. But more to the, the technical aspects of what Don's question was, it, well, how do you, what do you actually do? Where do you start? And this kind of comes down to my philosophy on list building. And I know all the different Art of War coaches, we have different philosophies on list building. So I'm going to get different coaches' opinions and create a whole series out of this, I think, because I think it's such a, a broad and interesting spectrum. But the, where I'm beginning is I like to create a list with a concept. Like, what is my list's identity? My Tau army is going to shoot somebody. You know, my Gene Stone Cult are going to be janky and play the mission. What... What is my army trying to do? Am I playing Space Marines? Am I trying to be tough in the middle? Am I trying to be janky, cool Space Marines running with uh, Vanguard vets flying around the table? Or am I trying to take a lot of heavy intercessors and just try to bulk my way through Terminators? So your list identity is kind of like in English. How do you, what do you want your list to do? Like how do you want to play 40K? And then the next question you want to answer is now that we have that, how can we actually translate that to in-game rules, scoring points, you know, the win conditions that I actually need to, be able to play the game. Think about 40k like a choose your own adventure board game or a video game, if, if for those of you who have experience with that. You can choose to pick it any direction you want. You want to, you want to go invest heavily in this aspect of the game and just see how far you can take it, like a deck building game maybe, and you can't invest in any things. That's okay. 40k is no different. Invest in guns, invest in combat, do janky stuff, invest in movement. Your points are resources, your CP are resources. All this stuff is list building choices you make. Uh, where you want to put them. So figure out your list identity. And different factions will lean towards different play styles and different identities, right? Not every army can just do everything. Some armies try, like Space Marines, and they end up falling flat in a lot of different areas, or sometimes they excel in one or two. And then some armies like um, Eldar, they have a really specific, unique identity, right? They're very fragile, they're super fast, they're very deadly. Um, not an army that you want to necessarily try to take the center of the board and try, out, try being durable with. And on the flip side, like armies can have multiple identities, like Tyranids. You can run Tyranids with 200 little gaunts. You can run Tyranids with all these monsters in Leviathan. You can run Tyranids with all the medium bugs. Tons of different ways. And honestly, the more, the more you go down the rabbit hole, the more and more ways you can find to play the game. So start with what, how you want to play the game is where it really begins. Now let's get into it. So once you have that concept, you want to translate that list those, those ideas into scoreboard points. And ideally, you want to have scoreboard points that you can kind of, at this point, we're playing 40K like it's solitaire, right? Like we're in our house or wherever you may be, and you 
are designing your army list. You're not at a tournament. You're not at your local game store. You're not playing anybody yet. So how can you actually know what secondaries you're going to take? How can you know what you're plan for the primaries? With that stuff, you can build into your list design, actually. So taking really durable obsec units means you're going to try to survive on objectives. Taking lots of tons of little fast little obsec units means you're looking to trade and steal your opponent's objectives and, and kind of tank his primary. So something like Dark Eldar with you know, nine units of racks for 40 points each, really, really effective at running to their opponent's side of the table and just standing on their objectives, whereas something like Death Guard taking 30 Blight Lord Terminators, not that fast, not that expendable, not tradey type of obsec, but I can plant 30 Blight Lord Terminators on objectives and just control primary like that. And now you're taking your identity, my, my Terminator-based Death Guard army, my multiple small unit Trikari army, and you're trying to figure out how you can actually score points with it. And even more so in secondary building, because it's like, how can I actually, um, how can I actually choose secondaries before my game with my opponent? Well, what ones can I do irregardless of my opponent? Usually, this is battlefield supremacy. To the last was a great option for this stranglehold because it was tied into the primary, and now those are gone, and that's what's caused such a huge rift and confusion as far as what to do in the game. So. With, if you take these go-to secondaries, like I can't tell you how many lists I wrote that started with Stranglehold into the last. Like that's my list identities for as far as scoring points are these ones. You can you got to look at the game in a different light. So instead of trying to score your points independently of your opponent, if you can do that, some armies can. For example, Dark Angels taking Stubborn Defiance, taking Oath the Moment. I saw that in our comment section. Yeah, that is just going to sit there and play 40k regardless of its opponent and try to do its strategy. But not every army has that ability anymore. Like, back in the day, every army had access to Stranglehold. Back in the day, today, currently, you know. Every army had access to Stranglehold. Every army had access to, to the last. Um, and you could usually figure out your third secondary through a Psychic one, or maybe your opponent gives up something, or actually you have a great Codex secondary you can take. But now that's gone. That's all shish kebabed. So we can try to take the next best in every category, like engage in all fronts, but that got nerfed. Behind me lines, that's just really hard for a lot of factions. No prisoners, assassinate, bring it down. Those all grind them down. They all require some opponent interaction. You know, I can't grind them down if my opponent's hiding behind walls. Can't no prisoners against six carnifexes. Like, what, you know, there's, you don't necessarily have a say in those ones. Banners is great. They buff banners. I think a lot of people are going to take banners. Retrieve Nachman data, now Nephilim data. That hasn't changed. So how are we actually building secondaries into our army? How can we take our army's identity in words and put it into points on the scoreboard? Well, everyone's got faction secondaries now, and they're way more up to date. Like some of them, none of them like are just straight up. This is terrible. There's a few, but most of them are not straight up. This is terrible. Most of them have legitimate play. So I think you need to build an army that is more flexible. You know, that way you don't have this rigid, I am always taking to the last every single game I built for it plan, like my Eldar. Super rigid and like they were fluid in that they could adapt. But the base game plan, Stranglehold to the last Psychic Ritual, that worked like 9 out of 10 times every time. So you got to be more fluid. And with fluid list design comes a more wide array of choices, like actual unit compositions. Because, you, you know, maybe I'll take a, libra a second librarian type sorcerer character because one's got to cast my buff powers, but I don't want to necessarily have to choose between casting my buff powers and castings like a ritual or castings like interrogation. So I need to be create that flexibility. And then maybe I do need the ability for rod. So I add some small five-man, six-man deep striking squads to my army, the capability of deep strike, or I, I leave command points unspent going into the game, knowing that I'll bring them up later so I can uh, potentially throw units into strategic reserve with my CP. So I can go for behind enemy lines, engage in all fronts, retrieve knockman data if I don't have some obvious um, choices. Got a $5 super chat. How about them Necrons? Thank you so much for your support. Let me let me hit this real quick. How about them Necrons? I just played against Mr. Sieg's in the war room. Fantastic game. First game with the new uh, mission pack, actually. And Mr. Sieg's, he took my Jukari to town. Like, on a material perspective, we both kept it pretty even. I was probably actually killing the Necrons faster than they were killing me. But Sieg's got me by four points. And honestly, it was on the back of just consistent play in secondaries. He's got ancient machineries. He's got code of combat. Um, you could do raise the banners. He didn't even go for that one. There's another Necron. They have such amazing secondaries, dude. Necrons, if you are playing a faction that has baked-in codex secondaries that you can just complete on your own like Necrons, holy moly, you are a great faction. Um, I really think factions that have that, like Sisters are another great example, have just skyrocketed in power because they can still choose to play 40k on their own. 
But even if you don't have that, it's not like you're screwed. It's not like you're SOL. If you don't have choose your own secondaries, these are awesome. It's okay. You have to make a plan more designed about disrupting your opponents because most armies are not going to have a, a set game plan. Necrons have one, sisters have one. I've actually yet to find a second arm, a third army that has. This is what I'm doing every single game is their game plan. So in the new world, so basically, just keep on creating a very flexible army so you can custom tailor your exact secondary plan to that. Again, Siegs is Necrons. I actually took behind any lines with my Drukari, took Raise the Banners of my Drukari, and I took uh, No Prisoners, because I'm playing against Necrons. And that's, that's totally viable. I took a flexible army. I could have taken R&D. I could have taken Engaged. could have taken Herd the Prey. Um, but against Siegs, I chose that combination. My army is really flexible. I think that's really, really important for list building right now. It's being able to just be okay at everything and then knowing as a general which of those okay tools is shining in this moment so that I can really um, pull off my strategy, my grand execution. Um, and that's a large part of that is also disrupting your opponent's side. I've played three games, four games, four games with a new secondary suite so far in the past week or so. Um, and a lot of them we're, we've pre-recorded. I'm going to be releasing for you throughout the week in the order and stuff. So check that as well, along with daily faction videos, explaining how every single faction is going to adapt to this stuff. So check that out if you haven't. But the whole point I'm getting at here is you can make a legitimate strategy now about disrupting your opponent rather than preserving your own points. A lot of, a lot of times 40k was played competitively, and why, why the old format got a little stale, in my opinion, was, and I'm very excited about this, is because the game was... Stale, stagnant in a way. I take string all, take to the last take of like a ritual. I have a 97 before you do anything. And, you know, against everything shy of Tyranids, my elders are already winning. Tyranids, same thing. They're just tabling you on stats and the mission plays itself once you're just dead. So how do you figure it out from there? The answer is basically now you have freedom to design your army a lot more to whatever the hell you want it to be. Because there's no, uh, there's no competing with someone who's got 100 points sitting on the, in the bank already. Uh, very few armies can pull that off, certainly not all of them, and you can disrupt Sisters and Necrons. Like, they're, they're not unkillable armies. You can just go out there and punch them. So if those armies are really good at baking in their secondaries, it's not like Eldar who are fire and fading. You literally can't do anything about it. These armies have to fight you. So game's in a really healthy spot right now. I'm very excited about that. The next thing you do for when you're designing a list, especially when all the game is changing like this, is be incredibly open-minded. I've kind of described how, especially with the, with, the, with the way these specific changes are, the game is uh, allowing you for a lot more play creativity, um, a lot of player skill, uh, exploration and all that. That's because there is no more, this is the thing to do, one, two, three, you win the game. Uh, very few armies have that. You, you basically have to create your own adventure every game, and, and you're down to your list design phase. So. With that, be super open-minded. I can't tell you how many times I've had people question how my list works or, you know, why is this unit in there? Why is that unit in there? What the hell is this unit doing? And I can justify it, no problem. But it's, it's you know, the reason you can't see that, for the reason you're not able to think of using a list, a unit in that way is because there's, there's a million factors really, but... A lot of times people think of 40k in terms of damage and survivability. This unit is tough. This unit is shooty. If it's mathematically good at that, I'm just going to take it because that's mathematically sound. That is just one element to the game. I always say the game is one loss in movement, not in damage output. So think about the fact that every unit has a base size for the most part. Every model has a movement characteristic. You can use that to move block. You can use that to screen. You can use that to steal an objective. You can use that to complete a secondary. You can do an action all simultaneously, potentially, you know, but in the right spot with the right movement. So when you look at things in terms of not necessarily how much damage they can do or how much guns they can soak up from my opponent, and you start thinking in terms of units as their every element of value they bring, you know, the size of their base matters, their position on the table matters, all that stuff. You can really start to transform your method of thinking about the game and, and find uses for these niche absurd units that, you know, have no place competitively, but you, you know, aren't fit your exact specific need really, really well. Because there is no format to 40k anymore in terms of like, this is just A, B, and C. The game is a lot more vibrant than it used to be. A lot more room for list creativity. And we're seeing it all throughout the meta. We, we are able to have a different guest on the Art of War podcast every week on three different shows and have the, the show not get stale. Because some, someone somewhere has always found some new creative way to play 40k at the top, at the top level. So that's awesome. So just be that person, you know? Go out there and try to explore. Be open-minded. Um, 
there's going to be radical shifts all over the place. And, you know, the Internet is full of opinions, left, right, center. This is good. This is bad. This sucks. I can't believe they ruined the game. Keep the negativity out of your life. It will only hurt you in, in every aspect, not just 40K. But it'll kill your love for the hobby, which is very dangerous because then you'll get all dejected and you'll be sad that you spend so much money and time on this hobby that you don't enjoy. You can just choose to enjoy it by cutting that crap out of your life. And then have an open mind to it. Change is coming one way or the other, but if we look at the whole general graph of where Games Workshop was, where 40K was, and I've been playing this game for 20 years, I'm telling you, from where it was to where it is, this is the direction of the graph. It, it looks like this, you know, over time, but when you get into it, but this is the overall slope, and that's really important to keep in mind. So just trust the process. And then with your list building, you want to find your army's identity. Then you want to translate that army's identity into a scoreboard that you can kind of complete on your own. And if you can't complete it on your own, then you need to transform your thinking into how can I disrupt my opponent's scoreboard as much as possible. Because you got to imagine they're also coming up with their own strategies. And ideally, they're going to be scoring as close to 100 points as possible, regardless of their opponent. So you need to be able to get in front of that. So if you can't get in front of that by also scoring 101 points, you know, getting as close to that magical 100 as possible, as reliably as possible, which is a lot of what the old format was, instead transform your methodology of thinking to how can I mess up my opponent's perfect plan as much as possible while doing my own participation, participation, participation on the mission. And then finally, being open-minded about what units are good. That's the last summary of it. So, you know, uh, all kinds of units go up and down in value. If, if the rumors are true and we do see points change slowly but surely, I don't know how drastic that'll be. I don't know if it's even coming. But if it is coming, you know, points changing always has the impact to take units that you haven't seen in years and years and years, collecting dust on the shelf and turning them into great units. Again, I can't stop saying I've been playing this game for 20 years. The things that are good now or were good six months ago or have been good in the past year or two were things I thought would literally never in a million years be good. Like, I, I can't, all the time I'm blown away by, I can't believe this. The Tyranny Warriors, right now, the Malice Scepter. Do you know, people I know who are literally professional Warhammer players didn't know the Malice Scepter was a model. They thought that was a brand new kit. And then they just got new rules and people show up with Malice Scepters everywhere. And now it's like, huh. The whole, like, just it, things, I don't even know where to start with this. Just give it time, trust the process, be open-minded. Good stuff becomes bad, bad stuff becomes good. It is the cycle of 40K. So just embrace that as best as you can and be open-minded, and you'll be, you'll be amazed by what kind of stuff you find. Got another $5 super chat. Aaron Barton, thank you so much. Hey, Nick, can you win with an Elder list, Eldar Wraith heavy list? Wraith are mostly elites and new book makes vanguards painful. Well, the nice thing about elites, actually, thanks to your super chat, is that elites, you get six of them in a battalion. And it's, you already want to take a battalion because it's the most effective detachment for your command points because you don't pay for it. If you're Warlords from it, you get a free battalion. Um, you also get a free brigade to patrol. But brigades are very hard to fulfill the requirements for. A lot of armies actually struggle to fill the troop requirement, surprisingly enough, or they're missing one key slot. Like, I just don't have good heavies, for example. Eldar have great stuff in every slot, but you don't really necessarily taking max of everything in every slot, that's 2,000 points right there. Close enough. So I would stick with a battalion. You get six elites in a battalion. Um, could I win with a wraith list? I mean, certainly some games, they have their strengths, they have their weaknesses, they're slow. I hate slow things, and I think that really gets away from the point of Eldar. Um, playing with a lot of wraith-heavy stuff really leans into the durability aspect of Eldar, which is certainly there. I've given wraith a lot of love over the years. So, you know, wraiths, wraith lords, wraith seers, wraith knights. Uh, all that stuff is actually quite good, especially when you couple it together, add an avatar in there. It's a super durable army. You can lean into that aspect, play Eldar like they're Terminators or like they're Custodies or something. And, that, and then add a little bit of MSU, multiple small unit Eldar elements to that. You can do really well. So pretty much one more time in summary. Keep an open mind. Sky isn't falling. Game's going to be fine. Everything's okay. Um, start with your list identity. Focus more on how you're going to, first step, figure out how you're going to score your points to the best of your ability, irregardless of situation to your opponent. And back in the day, you could get up to 97. Now you can probably get up to like 60 without having opponents say that, or maybe 70. So, you know, that's okay. Have a plan to then disrupt your opponent's ability to score. And that's kind of the guiding light you're going to use to actually write lists competitively in Warhammer. 
So I want to thank all of you guys who are watching right now and those who are watching in the future because you enable us to keep creating this amazing amount of content for you. We are doing a faction video on every single faction, how the Nephilim video or how the Nephilim pack is going to affect you moving forward. And then uh, don't think that's, that's just the tip of the iceberg. We've got no plans on slowing down. So you guys allow us to keep doing this. I can't thank you enough for that. Do us a favor. Click that subscribe button. Like this video. Leave us a comment. Feedback, good, bad. We'd love to hear it. Just anything, your thoughts uh, really means a lot to us. Helps the YouTube algorithms, I'm not going to lie. And it, it just helps us keep doing, producing this content for you. We're also producing content just like this in the War Room. That's where this idea, the idea for this video came from. One of our War Room members, Don, he literally just shot me a message, asked me this question. I started to type the answer, and then I realized the answer was a half an hour long video rather than a two paragraph long Facebook message. So I went in and I decided to make this video for you live. It's very impromptu. Hope you enjoyed it. But that's just one of the cool things you get as a, as a warrior member. You get to be part of an amazing community with like-minded individuals all focused on getting better in 40K, helping promote 40K, make a better hobby experience for everyone involved. You, your opponent, the people who don't play 40K but should be because it's an amazing game. That's all we're trying to do out here. So if you're not a member yet, you can learn more about it in the link below. We actually, if you're not sure what you get in it, it to, in summary, you get tons of premium content. But if you really want to know the depths, the details, and, and why it's really worth your time and your investment to at least consider it, check that link below. It's the warm slash learn more link. Um, give us that like, share, and subscribe. Got another $5 super chat because you guys can't stop with the love. Nick, do you see something like Morty making a turn? I love the idea of create your own adventure, yet hard to also be highly competitive. Mark, thanks so much for your super check. Good to see you last weekend in San Diego, buddy. It's been a pleasure. Um, Morty, he's always got that big mentality, you know, like I am, I'm a fire magnet. He can't really hide. He's above 16 wounds. And while some armies don't just kill him, some armies do. Railgun, railgun, railgun. I'm looking at you. And especially if people are gearing up to kill Tyranid monsters, which seems to be the direction of the game right now, I don't think the time, it's not, I don't think it's the time to also take a giant monster. He's a very meta dependent choice in the right it, create your own adventure solution. You know, I don't know every secondary combination that exists right now. He's also very disruptive. Like if we're talking about disrupting your opponent's game plan as part of your strategy because you can't just play solitaire for 100 points anymore, he's great for disrupting your opponent's game plan. He basically completely 180s your opponent's game plan to whatever it was to deal with Mortarian. So you can definitely build around that. I think that's a great suggestion. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for your support, for, 